Okay, good evening. Uh, this is the um, June 3rd meeting of the Development Government, Go Development Government Relations Subcommittee to Holy Hope City Council. Uh, with me is Mike Sullivan, Peter Tallman, and Terry Murphy. And uh, we don't have, we have a pretty brief agenda. Um, we don't have prior meeting minutes, that's agenda item one, so we'll leave that on the table. And I'll take a motion to open. Oh, wait a minute. This is a public. This is a public hearing. So uh, I'll take a motion to. And if, and if Ryan wants to correct me on that, I I, I think this is a public hearing. Is this, this is yeah. I think it is. So um, I'll take a motion to open a public hearing and take number two off the table. So second. Uh, on the motion made and seconded to open the public hearing, take number two off the table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion is a special permit application of the Colvest Group for a special permit for a commercial drive-through at 1575 North Hampton Street, which we all know better as, as Lynch School. I think Mr. Colachino, Mr. LaPointe are here and whomever else. So, uh, gentlemen and your team, if you want to come up to the microphone and tell us what's happening, we'd like to hear from you. Um, you can set up wherever you're comfortable. If um, you know, if, if you want us to see it, you probably want to set, bring it in closer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, uh, w once you're set up, we will just get your names and addresses. I, I don't know, Ms. Mr. Calcino, Mr. Point might have stepped out, but you, you gentlemen, can introduce yourselves and we'll proceed accordingly. There's Mr. Point. So point, do you want to proceed? Well, we're, we're ready, we're, we're just, so just grab the microphone and turn it on. Uh, Mr. Point, that, that mic will come off the stand, so if you want to, you know, if you want to come around and take the mic and stand in front of your <coughs> drawing, that, that might be best. So right. just, yeah, come on right in. So Mr. Point, I, I just, uh, just your address. Uh, my name is Peter LaPointe. I'm a project manager for the Colvest Group. Our office address is 1259 East Columbus in Springfield. Uh, we're here this evening to uh, request uh, uh, your recommendation of the full council for a special permit approval for a drive-through for one of two new buildings we we're proposing to develop at 1575 Northampton Street. Uh, as you know, the, the, uh, this is the Lynch School site uh, with Anniversary Road on one side, East Hampton Road on the south side. Uh, it fronts on Northampton Street and it backs up to Anniversary Park. Uh, the, the site is zoned business highway. Uh, it's surrounded by commercial and public use. Uh, what we're proposing uh, to do is develop the site for multi-tenant commercial use, uh, including two new buildings, a, a 17,000 square foot building at the back of the site and a, a less than 7,000 square foot building at the front of the site with a customer service drive through Our expectation is that one of the two tenants in that building will be a bank um, and we have, uh, we are proposing and have designed for a, uh, a bank drive-through. Uh, the property would have uh, three curb cuts uh, for customers, uh, one on Anniversary Road, the primary entrance on Northampton Street, and an entrance and exit, uh, left turn in, left turn out on East Hampton Road. It would also have a uh, exit only, uh, at, Curb cut at the on East Hampton Road at the back of the site, primarily for delivery vehicles. 
Uh, we got a lot of people trying to see that, if possible. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you what. So what, what we'll do is let Mr. Lapointe finish his presentation, right, and then we'll well then we we can turn it around. So go ahead, Mr. Lapointe. All right. In it. Um, in addition to the buildings, we're proposing uh, all new utilities to serve the site. We've, uh, we've confirmed that uh, uh, we have adequate capacity in gas, electric power, uh, glass, electric, water, sewer, uh, and storm sewer, and we're proposing a, uh, a totally new storm sewer system on the property. Uh, the two buildings we're proposing to develop uh, would include the bank building at the front of the site, and this is a perspective view that shows you uh, a view of the, the building with the larger building in back from the intersection. Uh, in addition to our project civil engineer, uh, Mr. Dana Steele, we have uh, also have with us our traffic engineer and our project architect, um, if you'd like um, a more detailed explanation of the architectural design um, or the, the civil engineering aspects of the site plan improvements. Uh, as I said, the drive through is uh, designed for a bank um, and in, uh, is, it's also designed so that it can in no way interfere with traffic on the public road. So, so how's that now? I mean, it can't, can't interfere with traffic public. Well, want to what it, it, the, the queue on the, on the bank is all queued up on site. So there's a drive through lane and the kick out lane. You'd have to get beyond 12 cars uh, in a single drive through lane for a bank uh, before it would even begin to interfere with traffic on the site. It, in no case does it ever uh, meander off the site onto a public road. And Mr. Point, uh, just so I'm clear, um, your entrance and exit on East Hampton Road, is that, is that approved? Yeah, this was actually a design uh, we came up with with the city engineer. Uh, his concern was that because this is a one-way road, uh, cars uh, uh, slowing down to turn left uh, it's, it's a common turn, turning movement to enter a parking, uh, a parking lot would be a right turn. This would be a left turn in. His concern was somebody would be try to, try to be pulling out while somebody was trying to uh, turn in. So what he wanted us to do was separate the exit and the entrance uh, with a large island and some distance. Excuse me, one more thing. Um, this is Frank Colacino from the Colvez Group. Um, we just uh, left a DPW meeting just a few minutes ago, um, and they went through this site plan design, and they were, they were fine with it. So um, uh, there's the traffic engineer and the, and the uh, DPW uh, engineer uh, spent a lot of time on this. Okay, so the, the Board of Public Works Took a, they took a vote? Uh, they took a vote, and uh, in the vote, the own, they did not approve the curb cuts um, because of the 20-foot width. Uh, the, the, the city has a 20-foot um, uh, width requirement. We're exceeding that in three locations, and um, one of them, the one on Route 5, has to go to D, uh, DOT. And so they wanted to, they, they authorized the engineer to make a public representation that the board approved the curb cuts uh, subject to DOT uh, approving this curb cut on Route 5. And when does, mass, when, when does mass DOT weigh in? They'll weigh in uh, probably in the next week or so. Okay. So and we, and we, right now, before you, uh, we're asking for a special permit for the drive-through. I think that's the, um, the purpose of, of the meeting. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Um, 
but these are all interrelated. Oh, no, I, that's why yeah. we provided yeah. site plans and we provided a rendering. Uh, we, we understand. Okay, and we'll we'll get to the um, we'll get to the comments of the various departments. Uh, no, no, there's no departments head, heads here that I can see, but they they sent their comments, and I'm sure you've you have, have you reviewed these their comments. Yes. Okay. Um, do you want to? Do you want to address them now, Mr. Lapointe, Mr. Calcino, or how do you want to do, how do you want to do that? Go ahead. I... Hmm. Copies there, there's copies here. If you're looking for, oh. I, do, I don't have one handy. There's an extra. I don't think the uh, in the the planning board comments. I'm not, I'm not sure that there was anything really left for us to respond to. Well, the, the so planning planning board we had we had April as an April twenty fourth letter. So that's a little bit that was a while ago. But I, that's the that's the most recent one that I have. Yeah. Yeah. These are all related to DPW. So the drainage and utility impacts; those were addressed. Um, the traffic impacts um, we've uh, partially addressed those, but that's part of DOT. Um, and then the East Hampton Road uh, entrance and exits and site circ and circulation that was addressed at the um, previous meeting. Okay, so we'll, we'll, just, we'll just hit them one at a time, Mr. Calacino. So, so the drainage and utility impacts. The applicant has submitted sufficient information to demonstrate the project and adequ adequately mitigate the city's drainage and, and utility facilities. So that sounds good. An, an application for approval by the Holyoke Stormwater Authority has been received. I did receive an email earlier that the Stormwater Authority did approve uh, did approve your plan. So, because it says it's going to be considered on June 3rd, and Mr. Parent, the city engineer, said it was approved. Correct. Okay, the traffic impacts. Jurisdiction for the traffic impacts is shared between the city and DOT. The city has jurisdiction over East Hampton Road, etc. Mass DOT has jurisdiction on Northampton Street from Lincoln Street to the north of the project to approximately 200 feet south of Dwight Street. The, the jurisdiction was established through a series of contracts in 1970. The city hopes to coordinate and re review with traffic impacts, but this coordination cannot happen until the applicant applies to Mass DOT. We have recommended that the application, <coughs> applicant begin the pro process, but to the best of our knowledge, an application has not been submitted to Mass DOT. Mr. Calcino, have you submitted an application to Mass DOT? No, the application will be submitted this week. Okay. Okay, so I, 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 I tend to, to not think that Mass DOT is going to get back this, this week, as, we, as you may we've have We've already had one meeting with the district regarding this, so. Okay. Uh, in advance of a joint review, DP has reviewed the information presented, uh, impact study, and submitted several questions. A response from the applications, these questions has not been re yet received. Um, so uh, that, that was the latest I had, gentlemen, on the traffic impacts. Are you saying that there's been further development? from this May 30th letter? Uh, yes, our traffic engineer responded to the, uh, <coughs> the, the city engineer's May 14th comments uh, in a letter uh, dated the 24th. The city engineer received it uh, on the 31st. Okay, and his I, letter to me is dated the 30th. And I assume that's the one you're referring to because I, you're copied on this, Mr. Point. so. Um, uh, the letter says a response from the applicant to these questions has not yet been received. Now, this is May 30th. Right. So, is your engineer with us? Uh, traffic engineer is here. Yes. Traffic engineer is here. Okay. Um, well, why don't you have the traffic engineer kind of up so we could just do these one at a time? It's not, it's not a really long list, so. I mean, I'm, try I'm trying to get us there, but I mean, if we're going to. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to rush through this, so just, uh, just, just name and title, 
Like uh, William Van Duser, traffic engineer with the uh, consulting firm Malone McBroom. Okay, just a touch slower. William, I got the first, okay. what's the last name? William Van Duser. All right. Uh, with the consulting firm uh, Malone and McBroom. All right, and where are you out of? Um, we're at 1350 Main Street, Springfield. All right, great. Uh, all right, um, uh, Mr. Van Duser, you're, you're aware of this May 30th letter. All I, all I have is a response says to these questions not been uh, received. What, what, to your knowledge, what's, this, what's the city's position and where, where are we with the traffic impact report? He's talking about the comments that came from the city engineer. Yeah, I think he, he sent this letter to you guys the, like the day before we submitted our response to, the, to his initial questions. Um, let's see, I can have a copy. Okay, so, all right, okay, so I'm, I wasn't clear when Mr. Point said. So, Mr. P okay, so this is May 30th. Mr. Point said that your firm sent a, a letter May 31st. Yep. I have not received anything from the, from the city engineer relative to your May 31st letter. Did, he, did they mention that tonight in, in the Board of Public Works? Uh, well, well, he was uh, Bob Parent, so he was there. Um, uh, in terms of the what they were looking at with, with related to driveways and site plan, um, you know he's fine with it. We've been working back and forth with him, so it was kind of. Um, I mean, he so he's he's aware of it. I, we've submitted our so this letter went out the the day before we sent our letter to him, responding to his comments, and he sent email emailed me back with some follow up questions on that. So all right, and, and just in general, uh, William, what 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 did your what are the traffic impacts that the that your study determined? In terms of impact, so uh, what we would look at is, according to the Transportation Research Board, we would look at the um, capacity analysis using the you know, Highway Capacity Manual 6 edition, which is the most current version. Um, so that, that would basically calculate delay in terms of the capacity, and then that gets translated into a level of service grade. Um, and we didn't, uh, our study found that there was no uh, impacts to level of service in terms of uh, Level of service grade C going to a D, for example, between the background condition, which is the the future condition without the site's traffic, and the combined condition, which is the the future traffic condition with the site's traffic. Yeah, I'm not shocked because if you're proposing a bank, I, I don't really see a you know this isn't Riverside Park or you know Six Flags, so I, I don't see it being a, a madhouse. But Mr. Calcino, the other building, what is going in the other building? Seventeen thousand square feet. Uh, we do not have tenants uh, yet, but it's uh, it's retail, uh, and um, uh, as in the last time I was here, it's hard to get tenants to commit uh, and really go through the process of of approval until we have a, an approved plan, and so that's what we've been attempting to do uh, in the last two or three months, what, what we've been doing is putting together the civil and engineering plans, all, all that, that, that all has taken a great deal of time. So um, it, all I can tell you at, at this point is our, uh, we're projecting for it to be retail. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to get to the, well, it's, it's about the drive-through. Let's, let's, let's just drill down to the drive-through. Okay. so. Um, all right, William. Thank you. I really appreciate your input. Uh, uh, and if any other counselors can, they can they can weigh in. But we will open this up to the public in in a, in a minute or two. This is just a process we follow. Um, East Hampton Road entrance exit. DPW has met with the applicant on several occasions relative to the proposal. The location of the site on the left side of East Hampton Road presents some unique challenges. Separation of the entrance and exits is shown on the site plan will reduce the potential for accidents. However, we still have concerns about crossing of vehicular traffic within the project interior. DPW expects to recommend further enhancement of the East Hampton Road entrance exits and interior site circulation as part of the planning board site review process. Okay. Um, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't expand upon his concerns. So he just says, however, we still have concerns about crossing of vehicular traffic within the within the project. So, um, just what what are his concerns, Mr. Point? I'm sure you. I'm not them. really sure what what his total concerns are. I do know that one of the things we had discussed doing was adding a stop bar and stop sign at this location. 
Uh, in order to get into the intersection coming this way, there's a stop bar. There's a stop bar here. Uh, this is one way out of the intersection. If we add a stop bar there, then you've prevented people from moving into the intersection. Uh, and again, this is an on-site, in-parking lot intersection, so you don't have people moving at speed. Uh, and that allows people to come in off East Hampton Road freely. Uh, and that, that was our goal, to take advantage of that uh, highway access. Right, okay. Uh, let's see, the last drive-through layout through an April 24th letter. Plain department requests that the applicant clarify a number of design details relative to the proposed drive-through, including stacking, lane delineation, and dimensional requirements. DPW has similar questions relative to the drive-through design. A response from the applicant to this request has not yet been received. But that is that not is that accurate? That was still? the additional traffic information submitted. He asked for counts for the drive-through, and I think we gave him that. Why don't you yeah. turn, yeah. Yeah, turn your microphone, will you? Really? There's a button in the front. Is this working? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Sure is. Do you, uh, do you want me to speak to that uh, memo? If you would. Okay. okay. No, you don't have to just touch it and then leave it on. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay. Green go. Yeah, I should know that, right? Um, so the, yeah, Bob Parent asked us to um, provide, well, in our, in our traffic study, initial traffic study, we, we assumed um, trip generation rates based on um, retail or shopping center, um, the drive-in bank, and then office space. So that was all included in our analysis. What wasn't split out is the drive-through trip specifically to the bank. So he asked us if there was any data for that. So there isn't, um, you know, there's some supplemental work that IT's done to research that. So uh, basically during the weekday morning peak hour, based on a percentage of the trips we expect to go to the bank, we're looking at a total of six trips. That would be three in to the drive through three out. That's in the morning peak hour. The afternoon peak hour, we would expect five, five entering, five leaving for a total of 10 to the site. Per and per hour, yes, this is for the peak hour. And then on Saturday, which would be the midday, around uh, you know 11 to one o'clock range, uh, we would have seven entering and exiting uh, for a total of 14. So the maximum queue would be, you know, something smaller than these numbers. It would be more than three, five, or seven, because obviously this is occurring over peak hour. It's not going to take an hour to go through the the drive up window. Hope not. Um, <laughs> no. All right. I've seen close, but not, not an hour. Um, Okay, and then as far as uh, your client, the bank, what does the bank want to do? I, I take it there's an ATM? Yes. Right, okay. And, and I take it they're, they're looking for 24-7 access to the ATM? Yes, I would, I, would, I would suspect that that's right. Okay, and... Uh, and has your potential client uh, indicated security measures on, on, on site for the 24-7 access? Lighting, um, primarily. Cameras? And, what's that? Cameras, Mr. Cameras, Cameron? yes. All right, and, and the lighting is gonna be, and I, I know a lot of this comes up in site plan review, but uh, you know, the fact is that we, we, we're, we're the ones that get the calls uh, not, not the you know anonymous planning board. Nobody knows who they are. Um, we, we we get them. So, um, and we just had just up just south of where you are at one of your clients, future competitors. I would say four hearings, and another committee. It should have should not have been another committee, but it was um, four hearings on a long hearings, public hearings on a drive through. ATM, very long. Yeah. Now that was a unique situation because the the drive-through abuts to a residential, and yours does not. Correct. That was that's the big, that's the no. big differential here. So um, this there's no residents even close to this. So the lighting area would be right here. It'll be very well lit. Uh, very, uh, it'll be seen. I mean, it'll be pretty prominent from the intersection. 
um, and, and cameras uh, both shooting in and shooting out uh, from the area. So I, I, I think that with all of the activity and the fact that it's so out in the open and there's no residents around, I, I don't suspect a lot of people will have some issues with this. Now, Mr. Calcino, has the, no, because there are no residents really proximate to, to that. So I, I, don't, I don't think they're gonna, I, I, well, there are residents here, so we'll, we'll see what they have to say, if anything. Um, the, are there improvements to the, to the roadway on either East Hampton Road or to uh, on Northampton Street? As part of this, it has, it, it, you, you do, have, do, you have, you do you have to make any improvements? Has that been? At this point, uh, no, uh, we, but we've yet to meet with DOT. And so once we start meeting with DOT uh, and, you know. Well, that'll be Northampton Street. So, no, so nothing from the city relative to East Hampton Road. No, no. no roadway improvements. And on Northampton Street, Microphone, we will have to go in. Yeah, thanks. Sorry we will have that. to go into Northampton Street to uh, terminate a couple of water lines, uh, install a new water tap, and bring that lateral back to the, the site. I'm hopeful we can reuse the existing line as a fire line. Uh, there's a sewer connection. Uh, so that there will, we will be disturbing the street, and obviously we'll be asked to repave in those areas. Yes, you will be disturbing the street. but. Um, okay, and, and just because we'll, we'll get this question as well, um, after we leave here, depending upon when that happens, your next stop is going to be to Mass DOT, and then your next stop is going to be to the Holyoke Planning Planning Board for site They're plan review. Almost simultaneous. We start almost the simultaneous. We, we start the site plan process when we submit to DOT. Right. Uh, uh, site plan, I think, is the eleventh. Uh, site, site plan public hearing is the 11th. The 11th, got it. Um, what time is that meeting? Excuse me? What time is that site plan? Is it six? Seven, I believe. Se se okay. Um, um, all right, I had another question, but I'll have to hold off on that one for now. Uh, do committee members have questions? <coughs> Council Tallman? Yeah, thank you, uh, and thanks for coming down and explaining this, uh, this, this project. Um, my concern a little bit is the one up on top in the back of the building, the exit. Uh, is there going to be some way where people know not to come in that, that way? Like a, a do not I, enter sign or something? Or The curb cut will actually uh. be structured to make it very difficult for you to make that left turn in. Okay. Uh, the idea is to get tractor trailer trucks out without having them uh, meander down through the site and, and in among the, the passenger vehicles and try to get out through the parking lot. So how do the, the tractor trailers get in through the front, through Northampton Street? No, the tractor trailers can come in this driveway. Oh, they will. So they're still going to go through the side. They, they can come in the side, down the main lane, and the, our auto turn programs show that they can work their way up around. Uh, my expectation is that the bank's uh, armored car will do what they always do, which is take up parking spaces right in front of the bank. Uh, so they're as close to the door as they can get as they carry cash in the building or out of the building. Right. Uh, uh, the, but each of these tenants will have a service door at the back of the building. Uh, garbage and service doors are uh, at the back, on this side of this building. Uh, so we wanted to provide clean truck access in and out of the site. I, just uh, in furthering that, um, I, our goal is to get the truck traffic coming this way, coming around, and around and back out. Back and back out. That's that's the that's the uh, you know since this is right off 91, this is where we think most of the truck traffic will be, uh, and and that's what it's designed for. And all the truck turning radiuses have been figured in for that, uh, and so it, it'll you know be a, just a one nice way to do that. Okay, and uh, while you have the mic, the, the, the drive-through, um, you'll have the, a bank window and then another lane with actually the ATM? Act, actually, just uh, no window. Just a, oh, no just, window? No. Oh, so that's gonna be, the you ATM, drive up, yeah. it's gonna be an ATM. Yeah. Okay, so no personal contact with any bankers or anything? They're getting away from that. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure, because it seems like there's another lane 
Some so the them, other lane is just if people want to come around? Uh, yes, the kickout lane, correct. The building, okay. So some of the banks are doing the um, uh, even remote, um, I, I forget, the. You, you go in and you actually see a live person, but they're not at the branch. Right. They're someplace else. And you get to transact your business with, with them. It's... And, and the road, uh, the, the back road on the right, is that coming in off of, is the anniversary road way over on the right? Is there an entrance there or is an exit? There is, a, there is an entrance here. Okay, so that's, that anniversary road, um, they're going to be coming up and uh, taking a left in there or is it, and then they'll be going out that way too? I'm just um, saying that that road is sort of messed, yeah, you know, it, bumpy and... We, uh, it, it, there will be some of that. We've provided for that. But we think the main entrance here on Route 5 is going to be right in this section to the left of the garage. Okay. And the other, and I'm sure you go through the site plan and I know the, the DPW, but um, if I'm coming north, you got a lot of traffic to come south on Northampton Street. And how do, is there going to be something done there where people can get across there or are they going to have to just there, mostly people coming from the north south? Yeah, okay. it, it, from here, it's, uh, I, they're going to have to just wait for a, a break and uh, go into, uh, take a left that way. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, that stretch of, so as you go past, if you're, let's say you're coming from the south on Northampton right. Street, Route 5, you go past White Street, East Hampton Road, there's actually two lanes north of there. Um, for whatever reason, just two lanes wide. Or two lanes, right. Right, so... I, I would assume if you're taking a left, you'd wait in the you know the left-hand lane, and the right you could bypass, you know, in, in your own lane. No, I'm just saying it's a yeah. busy it's a busy area in the traffic. I know we have a traffic yeah. island by the the school right there, directly yes. in front of the school yeah. now, which is maybe 40 feet long. Yes, and then the, the that driveway will be about 100 and I would say 162 feet, I think, away from where that island is, or where the beginning of the island is. And the queuing that we saw on that approach ends around 150, so it'll be just behind the queue that we're predicting, you know, based on the model that we have for traffic. So for that signal, the, the lane they got across, you know, they'll, it'll be, they'll be able to make that movement, I guess. There won't be a blockage there to delay them. Yeah, because it's not too much further from the traffic light, you know, that's Right, exactly, so. right. So that, that queue, we're predicting the queue would end before the driveway, that's where it's ending now, so it won't, we don't, it, that shouldn't impact the operation. And then the other thing, um, you know, we talk about left turn across, um, um, you know, looking across. for a gap there. Usually those, those movements have a pretty, you know, they don't have much delay um, typically, so. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I'm not gonna completely agree with that um, because um, I live in Holyoke, Mass, in the real world. So what happens there at that light at, um, at Dwight Street is that that going north, You've, you suddenly get a choice of uh, one of two lanes. Um, so if you're in the left-hand lane, generally what you're saying is that you're either gonna turn into Reardon's Garage, or you're gonna turn into the Chinese restaurant, or you're gonna turn into the bank, or more, or the Notel Motel, or most likely, most likely what's gonna happen is that you're going into the left lane and you're gonna turn left going up the ramp to uh, Route 91. That's the normal, that's the real world of that area. So what you're saying, however, is that, now I get it, it's a bank, I guess, so we're not gonna have a massive volume of traffic, but when retail, the retail world comes around, that's gonna be a different story I'm gonna suggest. So as Councilor Tomman rightly pointed out, the <coughs> access at Anniversary Road uh, you're either going to have access right there at the first one going into the bank and then another access at Anniversary Road, um, just uh, you know, 50 yards or whatever it is uh, away. That's the lane in which most motorists, and we all know how patient they are, that are gonna, going up. So what they're going to end up doing is then merging into the, going into the right-hand lane to swerve around them so they can get back to the left lane so they can make their left to go up to the 91 ramp. I'm gonna to suggest to you that MassDOT is gonna have a comment about that, and I'd be very interested to hear what they say. The right-hand lane is generally for those who wanna, I mean, turn into the gas station on the right, or they wanna take a right onto Beacon, 
or they want to turn turn right into your former project, but there's so few businesses there now, I doubt they're going to be turning in there anytime soon, or most likely they're going to want to keep going north, Mr. Calcino, on Route 5. That's generally how that little stretch of roadway works. <clears throat> um, with this project and your design, which I, I don't, you know, have a, a better way, I'm just saying what the reality is, um, th those that the, the, the vehicular traffic has to be considered and Mass DOT is going to have some comments for you, I hope, relative uh, to that. My real comment though is the back of the building, what is that? Is that a wall? Yeah. The, right here. This is a retaining wall. Uh, how, how tall is it? Uh, I think on the highest is eight feet. Whoa. That's an eight, eight foot wall? In the back, yeah. So we're going to bring that down. Um, and then what is it? It goes down to zero, Dana? Yeah. yeah. So eight foot is right here in this, in this corner? Yeah, yeah, the corner is the highest point. Right. OK, and, and how does that look exactly from, uh, you know, if I'm, standing at, if I'm standing at the batter's box at home, <coughs> at, in, uh, in anniversary field, what, what am I looking at? Am I, am I, am I looking for an eight, like, like the green monster? Is that what I'm looking at in, no. in left field? What, what, what am I seeing? But it, it's down. The, uh, the field is back here. Yes. So it, it there'll, be a, there'll be a fence uh, along here. Um, you, at the anniversary field, you're not going to really see it. And I don't think you see it from, uh, because it's behind the building, I don't really think you see the wall. It's in the cut, not filled. Right. Say that again. It's in the cut. Dana Steele, uh, civil engineer, worked on the plan. Uh, that corner uh, is, is being lowered down. So when you're up in the field, you're up above it. So you're not going to see any wall uh, as you're looking from the field. So it's like if you were walking towards the site from the field, you get to a, a wall, there's a fence there. And if the fence wasn't there, you could fall over the wall. That's why there's a fence to, to, so to protect it. But you won't, see, uh, you won't see the wall at all. You'd only see the wall from Northampton Street, East Hampton Street, as you're looking to your, to your left. Um, and the building's going to be blocking most of it. All right. In the back of the building, what, you can't, can you see the back of the building from the field? No, the back of the building will be set, set. You'll see some of the building. Sure. Yeah, you'll see some of it, but it'll be recessed, you know, dipping below the horizon. You know, the building's going to be lower, so you're going to see the, 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 the horizon, and you'll see just the top of the building. Of the, all right. I get that we're talking about drive to, but I'm asking anyhow. Um, just so you know, we, and I, I say this, your, your attorney's not here, but Mr. Point's been here more than once. Um, so we, we have just very, very broad, broad authority under special permits. I mean, we can't be ridiculous, right? It can't be, you know, something completely off the wall. But we, we can amend special permits or condition special permits pretty much any way we want. Um, so, just saying. Um, so, with that in mind, um, the uh, how, how tall are these buildings, by the way? How, but first, how tall is how tall is the Mr. Calcino? How tall is the bank building first? Uh, the bank building. Is it two stories? Uh, Matt. Uh, Matt Whitmer from Phase Zero Design, the architect of the project. Um, the bank building at its highest point is uh, 20 feet, and um, same with the uh, retail building as well. Uh, and that's actually the you know the the higher point where the parapet is. It's not the full height of the building. Okay, so the just roof, steps up. No, I, I, I yeah. copy that. Uh, the, the roof is is how high? Mr. The the roof is at 18 feet. 18 feet. And is it, are they single story buildings? Yes, they both are. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we are in a public hearing. I don't know that councilors raised their hands. Um, if any members of the public wish to address this committee, um, you step up to the microphone. You all know how like, we like hearing from the public. We enjoy that very much, but we do put a time limit on it of a uh, you know, reasonable amount. It's not going to be 30 seconds, but it's not going to be 18 minutes either. So 
Um, so then we just state your name and address and you just, just address the chair, that's all you do, okay? Helene Florio, uh, 31 Wellesley Road here in Hoyoke and I'm also representing the Hoyoke Taxpayers Association. We are extremely, in, uh, unanimously in support of this project and we are just very hopeful that um, yeah, we, we understand the permitting process and what needs to be done and the, the breadth of authority that you have, but we hope that uh, this can be as smooth as possible going through. Uh, our, you know, we're very selfish on this. We would like to see this completed and on the tax rolls as quickly as possible. And thank you for all of your due diligence on it. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Florio. Anyone else want to raise their hand and come up to the mic, either for or against, please? Just come on up and, yeah, please, just step right up. You can just state your name and address and same thing. Good evening. Paula Ferrario, 25 Morgan Street. And Councilman Barkley, I'm impressed with your photographic memory of, of the corner. But um, so, you know, I, I was coming with very specific comments. But one thing, very quickly, I would like to say that as I was listening about this project, it really brought me back to my memory of geometry and calculus class, where you would do this equation, these theoremas, based on an hypothesis. But for the hypothesis to function, you had to put a condition of existence, and you put C with a reverse C. And partially here, you know, and it would be X, smaller than three or something like that. But here, we do not have a commitment from a bank. We don't know what the X is or from the business. So that, you know, there are banks that do everything completely online. There are banks like, I can guarantee, go to the Bank of America at Stop and Shop, and on a Friday, there's way more than 12 cars, both park and going through the drive through so, so the incognito is really important. The other part is, you know, Mr. Bartley, you say this is not six flag, but I got a chance to look at the plan and there is enough parking there for six flag. There's an in incredible amount of parking, so I'm wondering what is this unknown business that is coming there? The other thing, I, I, and I did it just with my finger, but approximately the dist distance on Northampton Street for the left turn into, into the park, in, into this new business, is about 260 feet from the light. Uh, you have two, three cars stop trying to turn left. You know, I think it's also important to think from um, coming down Dwight is like at seven in the morning, people are gonna have the sun right in their eyes. That's a really, you know, we got traffic of people going to South Hadley. There is traffic in the morning, sun in the eyes. You know, this entrance on the left, uh, on, the, on the map I saw, you know, take out sidewalk in order to get um, an entranceway. It's extremely, extremely dangerous for pedestrian. And it's true there aren't houses there, but there's a whole neighborhood that, work, that walks up to there. And looking at this proposal, it makes it a lot more dangerous for the walker. Um, I, I think I was in front, I get the committee confused, but I think I was in front of this committee for my garage and I had to come three times. You were. And I thought, oh, this was the right yes. yeah. And I thought that was a good thing. Did we make it come three times? Well, was, you know, I you wanted, I, I, I think it was twice. Well, there was yeah. there was an objection, and it, it's there was an objection from the building inspector, and you asked me to 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 uh, analyze it and come back and, and argue with it, and and I thought that was a good thing, and you asked a lot of questions, and it was just a little garage, and I think that's good, and this is major, and you know, um, and again, yes. I guess the Colbus Plaza is paying some taxes. I guess they're collecting mo money from the ex-pharmacy, but it's still they're leaving what is heads down now, the worst 
the worst like lot in the corner. It, it's really an eyesore. And on the other side, you have a lot of people from Ward 7 that pay really good taxes, probably more than what Colbus pay, that deserve a really good access way to the highway. They deserve good traffic. So that's my argument. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else want to raise their hand? Yep. Just come. Yep. Just have to raise it once. Uh, just come up to the mic and name and address. Diane Thurston, 158 Morgan Street. Um, what concerns me most about this is the traffic flow issue. When you're coming off 91 and you have those three lanes on Dwight at the stoplight, people are switching lanes there and it's, it's really, as it is now, not a good situation. And there are not three other you know, entrance, you know, exit, exit, and entrance there. This is going to be really confusing, and the zigzagging of traffic there is going to be very tough. And also, the Anniversary Road, going to Anniversary Field, where people are going to do sports and recreate and stuff, that's kind of difficult to have that now be a tractor-trailer entrance. And the other thing is that tractor trailers coming down off 91 that are going to be veering over three lanes to make a left turn immediately after that merge, that's terribly frightening. We go down there all the time, and I don't see tractor trailers there really ever. And I, I think that we need to think seriously about before we start having people killed at those intersections, we should think about what we're doing. Thank you, Ms. Thurston. Uh, anyone else want to, uh, yep. Counselor, come up to the mic, just set your name and address, please. Yeah, Mimi Panich, 134 Madison Avenue. And really, I just had a question for the gentleman from Colvest, which is, you know, I understand all along the drive-through has been planned for a bank. And I just was curious about whether there is now an actual commitment from a bank to come in there, or whether this is still theoretical and based on the assumption that, yes, this is a desirable location, and yes, a bank will want to move in once the drive-through lane is permitted. I assure you I will ask that question after we go through the public process, Mrs. Panish. Ms. Panish. Great. Thank you very I much. I assure you I'll ask that. And if I don't, one of my colleagues will remind me, or you'll yell. All right. Uh, okay, anyone else would uh, like to hang behind the sign? Okay. Um, I don't see anybody else. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. LaPointe, you, you heard the question from Attorney Panich relative to um, is there a commitment uh, for a bank? Or Mr. Calacino, if you want to address that. Yeah. No, there, there is no commitment from a bank yet. So not, nothing? Okay. So we're anticipating um, being able to do that. Yeah, okay, yeah, all right, thank you. Uh, um, sorry about that. It's a little computer issue here. Okay. Um, well, I have, uh, I have my opinion on this, but do any counselors want to, because right, so we're still in public hearing, <coughs> so, um, I, I, I'll just state my point of view. I'm of the opinion that um, I need to hear from Mass DLT on this. Uh, I don't have any reason to think there's going to be. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know what they're going to say. I'm, I should, I'm not going to say that comment. I don't know what they're going to say relative to um, anniversary. I just, just I think one of the commenters said about truck traffic. The, the way that the, 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 we didn't really told my commitment, turned the sign around to the public, but the, the, the truck flow didn't look like it was going on anniversary road at all. Mr. LaPointe, is that accurate? That's, that's correct. Okay, so Mr. LaPointe said that's accurate. All right, so the, the truck flow is really coming off of uh, East Hampton Road, going in at the first entryway and then circling around the back building and, circ and circulating back out onto East Hampton Road, which with a dedicated left-hand turn at the most western point of the property. Um, one thing I didn't ask is, uh, 
aesthetically, what, what are we looking at on, uh, on Northampton Street? And then what are we looking at for the, uh, it, and right next to the building, is that, is that, is that, is that Murphy, Reader's Garage, George Murphy's Garage, right? That little white spot there? Okay, all right, well, so, so what, what's that? What's that? I see a tree, and I see another tree, and I see what looks like a... There's a landscape island back here on our property. Okay. This, our property actually butts right up against the back of Reader's Garage. Okay. And so the back of the building? Oh, yeah, it's the microphone, I'm sorry. God, sorry about that. Um, and it, it hugs the fence line all the way down on this side, so... Is that a fence, Mr. LaPointe? There is fence there now. That's where he's storing towed cars. There's a chain link fence there. Yes. Okay. So, are, are, is there going to be another fence or a structure on your property? We're, we're going to have to do something as a visual barrier, uh, just so that you're not looking at junk cars on that side. Okay. So you're thinking uh, what? A solid fence. A solid fence. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, because I see a lot of parking spaces there, and yes. is, is there, actually I see a lot of parking spaces all over the place uh, on that, on that plan. Well, what we were trying to achieve was five spaces per 1,000 square feet, and that seems to be what the retail tenant wants. That is our experience, and we're, we're not quite there, but we're close. Uh, how many spaces, how many parking spaces do you have, by the way? 110. Well, it seems like that'll be uh, sufficient, anyhow. Um, you know, I was just thinking, in, just in terms of you know, greening that up a little bit, um, that would be. Uh, I mean, you are next to a ball field. I um, mean, just like the, the and. Uh, <coughs> I mean, what what are your plans to sort of green the green that? I mean, that's a lot of asphalt. I guess that's, that's my point. And your stormwater plan, I, I get it. That was approved and. That's a different department, but what's uh, what's the thinking about greening that up, Mr. Calcino? Yeah, we, what what we've done here in terms of landscaping, we've we've either uh, met or exceeded uh, the town standards for landscaping. Uh, typically, on a on a retail office complex like this, uh, it is four to five spaces per thousand, and that's what is uh, it, that's what you provide in order to, um, uh, to service your, your, your center. So it's not excessive in terms of how it works. Uh, but in, in each of the instances here, uh, we've gone down and, and in most cases, I think we've exceeded the landscape requirement from the town, have we not? Peter? Yeah. I don't know, we have landscaping requirements. What, what, are, what are our landscaping requirements? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if there are. What, what uh, Jeff Burkott had asked for were the trees around the perimeter, which we've added. He's added for the, uh, the, uh, the grassed islands. Right. He wanted to make sure the areas that we grassed were irrigated. They will be. Uh, as recently as uh, this week, uh, I'm sorry, Friday, uh, I talked to, uh, talked to Jeff about adding landscape planted areas on our side of the property line um, and a, a commitment that we would mow and maintain the public land on the other side of the property line out to the back of the sidewalk. Okay. Um, and I'm not being, you know, that's trying to be argumentative here, but I, I have seen your other properties um, and they're, um, but the buildings are lovely, but the but the um, the parking lot, Mr. Points. I, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, either either on uh, a memorial in West Side or on uh, East Columbus, um, they are pretty not green, in my opinion. So I I, I I get the fact that you've got five spots for every thousand square feet, but. Man, that just looks like a lot of asphalt on there, if you ask me. I, I, I wish there was something that could be, you know, just reconsidered about that. I, I'm not going to make a motion to that effect because I think that's just a little touch beyond the pale. But um, 
I would just ask you to sort of just sort of consider that a, a little bit. I, I I do see some you know the ends of the parking rows that, that looks like that. I, I'm not even sure what, what are those by the way. No, I see the tree. Well, what, what the kind of the yellowish thing, the orange? Yellow. What what's that there, Mister? Oh, they are. Oh, okay. Oh, those are all right. Those are all right. Well, that's you know that's that's somewhat better um, to know. All right. Um, all right. And and so I, I my I just want to vote. So um, so we don't you know we this is all open meetings. We don't talk about this before. But it, you know to, to not have to not have a firm commitment from Mass DOT. So when 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 are you going to meet with them? We don't have a date yet, right? We do not have a date yet. Uh, this is, we've met with the district engineer, tra permitting engineer. This was viewed as a, because it is an existing curb cut today, we're not asking for permission to create a new curb cut. We've slid it slightly south. We've changed the shape, width, and, and the geometry of the curb so that uh, cars can make a turn in without overtopping the curb. Uh, we'll install handicapped sidewalks on either side of it, which are not there today. Uh, and the, the permit engineer for the district was very encouraging simply because in their view, it was a very minor change. Um, in addition to that, that we had talked about handicapped access, we've created an ADA compliant ramp uh, to get up to uh, the parking lot elevation from the public sidewalk elevation and then pedestrian walkways all the way to the back building. We did the same thing over here, only this doesn't, didn't need to be a ramp because it's a grade with a walkway over to the building. Right, okay, that looks great. And there's bike racks, I think, on both buildings. Okay, Council Sullivan. Yeah, uh, myself, just my opinion is I'd, I'd like to see us move forward with this uh, being it's a, uh, really the uh, drive-through special permit we're looking at, uh, whatever issues they may have with uh, Mass DOT, which seems like they would be r relatively minor, uh, seems to be a, a problem they can work out in site plan review and with the planning board, and that we ought to not um, hold this up. We ought to just move forward on what's before us with the uh, uh, drive-through permit. Okay, thank you. Councilor Murphy. Yeah, just, and again, it goes to the traffic concerns. So coming down East Hampton Road, there's a truck and truck exit, an entrance, and then a, I'm assuming a regular vehicle, car vehicle exit. So so let's take the uh, truck exit first. How far is that from the uh, crosswalk down on Northampton Street? How far is this exit from? From the crosswalk down on Northampton Street. From this crosswalk? Yeah. I don't know, what's the length of the side? Uh, it's about 315 feet. And, and, the other, and the other exit, how far is that from the walkway? About 130. And, and are there walkways on that left side of East Ham Road? Yeah, there's a sidewalk yes, there. There's, there's a, a sidewalk. Yeah. Okay, and then on this side, it's from the the, uh, the Northampton Street side, from the traffic light or from the crosswalk. Is that about 110 feet too? Yeah, the nose of the island about 162 feet, which would be where the stop bar is, and the vehicles will be stopped. Okay, and this, I mean, this isn't something we're doing, but I look at a lot of cross traffic, and I know you're you're going to put stop signs and everything like that, but it would seem to me like the trucks coming in there, especially if we're talking tractor trailers, uh, might be better not to have a two-way traffic there, but that's just my opinion at this point. And, uh, but I do think the concerns about safety, both people pedestrians and, and people being able to turn and not block traffic are legitimate. They're not the kind of things we're gonna take up tonight. But the other aspect, what happens if we grant a special permit and you don't get a bank? Then what happens? Most deliveries happen in, in, in the morning. 
uh, you don't get you don't get deliveries to the to the places in the when, in the busy times. I mean, they're just they're just structured that way. Um, so it's not as big an issue in terms of the truck traffic as 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 you might think. You, they don't have them coming in all day long. Uh, so I, I think it's you know, the perception of that is is worse than 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 what the actual uh, is. Are you saying in terms of the traffic on the highway or traffic on the, in your in your institute well, in your it, business? I'm, I'm I'm talking about the traffic within the interior of the lot. Okay. Truck okay. traffic coming off to deliver to the premises are usually happen in the off hours in the in the morning hours. Okay, thank you. Charles Solomon. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also in the opinion that uh, we should move this forward tonight. I think it's important that, um, you know, I'm satisfied with this. We're here for a drive through for a special permit. I'm satisfied with uh, the, the design and what, what everything said um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, I did have some concerns. I think that's going to be worked out with the DOT or with uh, the planning board. Um, this building is, has been there vacant probably for like eight to nine, 10 years. And um, we like to see something in there and, and we definitely knew, do need uh, new, new taxes in our community. So I, I'm very much uh, in support of this and hopefully can move this favorably out tonight out of this committee. Uh, okay. Um, I'd love to make a comment right there, but I won't. That'll be for tomorrow night. I'm, but I'm gonna remember that one. I'm gonna remember that line tomorrow night, believe me. Um, uh, when we talk about taxes, I can't, I can't, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, what I am going to say is uh, counselors want to make a condition, you can make a condition. So you can condition a special permit on a, be a lending institution or a bank, you can do that. You can also make a condition that uh, the requirements of Mass DOT and the Department of Public Works uh, be met uh, relative to 9.4.2. You know, I don't, you know, counselors can say what they want. But 9.4.2, you read that, read that ordinance, very clear, incredibly broad authority for, for, uh, for, from this body, um, you know, re relative to putting special conditions on permits. Very clear. So even though a counselor might say, well, it's just a drive-through, that's, that's fine, but, but that, that clause in the ordinance allows us to make, uh, make conditions that are relevant. I think a condition that, that uh, the institution be a be a financial one or a lending is or a bank of some sort. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think another condition could be to special permit could be uh, satisfaction of uh, mass DOT and DPW requirements. I don't think that's unreasonable. And those can be conditions of special permit. If there are other ones, uh, then counselors can can raise them. So second. Your all right, motion. those are my motions. Sorry, that second motion made in second of conditions. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. So those would be the conditions. Um, I'll first need a motion relative to the, now is the public all set? Does the public want to address this anymore? Okay, um, so I'll take a motion on closing the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to be in a second to closing uh, close the public hearing under discussion, hearing none, all in favor, aye. Public hearing, well, I was one, so I, yeah. okay, that was one, so that motion fails. All right, so that, that failed. You want to try it again? Uh, is, motion, is there a motion to close motion, the public motion hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made in a second to close the public hearing and discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, there you go. Okay, motion uh, opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Um, all right, the, um, uh, before us we have a, uh, a, a uh, application for a special permit. It's been uh, seconded for the two conditions as aforesaid uh, on the, on the application for a special permit as condition. Is there a motion? Motion to approve with conditions. A second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the special permit with the conditions. If, uh, if my friend Mr. Allen would just write down those conditions, that would be one is that the uh, institution be uh, in the 7,000 square foot building, Mr. Calcino. In the front building with a drive through will be a, it will be a bank. Uh, and the second condition will be that the requirements, uh, such as they are from uh, Mass DOT and from the Department of Public Works and the Board of Public Works be uh, fully satisfied by the applicant. Those are the two conditions that have been uh, made and seconded and approved by uh, a 4 nothing vote. Um, so on the special permit as conditioned, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, so we just approved that uh, recommendation 
to the full city council, which will meet uh, tomorrow at seven o'clock. Okay. All right. Thank you to the uh, proponents and thank you to the public. Thank you very much. We'll just give them uh, we'll just give them half a minute to clear out, and then we'll move on to we'll move on to number two. All right, take that. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the, um, with our agenda. Uh, if I could get a motion to open a public hearing and take agenda item three off the table, please. So moved. Second. Uh, motion is made and seconded to open a public hearing and remove agenda item three from the table. All in favor, aye. The motion, the order is special permit application of Mount Tom Generating LLC. Boy, this is, this is like every six, eight months I come in. This is great. For a new special permit for construction or substantial improvements on existing structure in the flood overlay district at 200 Northampton Street in Smith's Ferry. And with us, we have uh, three people. And we're going to let you... So there, there is a microphone. As uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are gentlemen, you are aware. You can take that off the stand. Yes, please. If you would just be so kind as to introduce yourselves, uh, that would be great. Miss Adams. Adams, just turn the mic on. Sarah Adams with Tie and Bond, and that's at 53 Southampton Road in Westfield. What's your title, Ms. Adams? Project Planner. Thank you. Go down the line. Sure. Melissa Cody from Ty and Bond, also 53 Southampton Road, Westfield, Mass. I'm a project manager. Good evening. I'm Bob Maggiani with uh, NG, representing the Mount Tom Project. Bob, just, just spell your last name. Sure, it's M-A-G-G-I-A-N-I. Just like it sounds. And, and your title, Ms. Mangini? Uh, environmental Manager. And you've been with us before. Yes, I have. Okay. Proceed. All right. Um, so on April 25th, Ty and Bond had submitted a special permit application for the Mount Tom Plant Decommissioning and Solid Waste Management Project on behalf of Mount Tom Generating LLC, who is the applicant. Uh, the application is for activities to support the closure, decommissioning, and remediation of the former coal plant site, which is located at 200 Northampton Street. Uh, the site is located in the floodplain overlay district and therefore requires a special permit under section 8.1 of the Holyoke Zoning Ordinance. There are three affected parcels that are shown on the figure here. It's assessor's map 227 lots 4 and 5 which are in the northern portion of the site um, and then assessor's map 226 lot 9 which is the southern portion of the site and that's also the location of the solar project. Uh, the application proposes decommissioning of plant infrastructure, remediation activities, including capping of three areas, as well as repair of a failed portion of the Kennedy Brook Slope. Uh, the plant closure is being conducted in accordance with the administrative consent order executed between MassDEP and the applicant. And the primary goal is to demolish and remove facilities associated with the former plant and restore the site to a condition of no significant risk to human health or the environment. Um, there are no plans for development at this time post decommissioning. And the proposed project activities are all outlined in section 2.2 of our special permit application submission. I can run through a quick bulleted list and expand on anything that people have questions on. Yeah, why don't you just give us Reader's Digest version, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so we have remedial capping of the former plant dump, the petroleum and vanadium areas, which 
are labeled in the application as areas A, B, and C, and they're also labeled on this plan. So we have A, B, and C. Then we have the Kennedy Brook failed slope stabilization, uh, the, demolish, the demolition and decommission of the industrial wastewater treatment plant, um, and then subsurface infrastructure removal, and in place abandonment of the coal conveyance system. There is also decommissioning of three lined basins proposed, and those are labeled on here as well, the sedimentation basin, the special basin, and the bottom ash basin. And also removal and decommissioning of NIPTES outfalls, which are labeled on here as well. Um, They're these numbers along the river. The application details how the project meets the floodplain overlay district special permit criteria. And the real takeaway is that no fill in floodplain is proposed. It's a net zero fill project. So no um, compensatory flood storage is required. And that the goal is really just to restore this site to a state of no risk to human health or the environment. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cody, Ms. Mangini, did you want to add anything to this? Okay. Council members have questions for the uh, proponent? Councilor Sullivan. Thanks. Um, so basically, this is for continued demolition and remediation of the site. There's no new construction involved. Correct. When's the chimney come down? <laughs> Those are my questions. It's uh, set, set for the week of, I'm sorry. That's set for the week of July 15th, and most likely the stack will fell on Sunday, July, I think it's 22nd. <clears throat> so is that already permitted also? The stack has been cleared of asbestos and uh, all the other contaminants of concern, and so yes, we have a we have to have a demolition plan sent to DEP for review and approval, which is in development right now, but everything else is set to go. Yep. And all of these have been through DEP approval as well? We're in the process of all the other um, requirements meeting the, um, the state law for like the chapter 91 structures as well as uh, mass dep regulations for remediation under the massachusetts contingency plan for the three areas in the kennedy brook field slope area so we're assessing two different sets of um require requirements and <clears throat> how, how long do you expect it before you get final approval on this we expect to have final approval in the next couple of months so we can start Demo, future demolition activities towards the latter part of August into September. So there'll be minor work done this year because of the time of season and most of the work will again start next year. And do you need the special permit prior or as part of that uh, process to get the DEP approval? Um, do you have to have this in place ahead of time? No, no, it's just requirement of DEP would be to obtain all proper permits and approvals prior to commencement of work. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilors have questions on this side of the table? Nope. Um, what, what's, the, what's the plan for the property? To sell the property. And we'll lease back the solar field from the new owner. Okay. Um, lease back, okay, sell the property and lease back the solar field from whoever owns it. Acquires the property, right? Okay. And is the property being marketed? Uh, yes. And, and how large is the property when it's all said and done? I'm sorry? How, how large is the property when it's... It's 143 um, acres in total. No kidding. Boy, that site was, um, what an environmental disaster that was, huh? For a long time, you could just do stuff, and um, you could just do whatever you want on the Connecticut River. Just let it slide right into the river, right? 
That's what happened in the past, yes. Yeah, what a disaster. What a shame. But we're here to remedy that with the risk assessment. So I, we're doing the risk, already done the risk assessment, which meant taking um, hundreds of soil samples, hundreds of groundwater samples, assessing that risk against uh, mass DEP criteria for both soil and groundwater for eco, human health and the environment and the areas that are designated for remediation um, have not met the criteria and with these uh, measures they will then meet the criteria for mass DEP and for the next property owner those conditions will be uh, affixed through an activity use limitation onto the deed so that these conditions go on forever with whoever owns the property. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it zoned? Do we know? I don't know. It's industrial zoned. It's If you just tell me the page, we follow. Um, we are. Maybe I don't have it. It's certainly an industrial zone. Uh, general industry and industrial park. So it's a split zone, and then the entire. And whatever happened to that to that plan to put up a salt uh, to, to mono, a monopole? Whatever happened to that one? That was not uh, canceled. All right. And whatever happened to all the prior plans to to remove the smokestack? Because we, we we've, I've been hearing about that from Ty and Bond for at least four years. Right. Ladies, whatever happened to that one? I've been here I've been hearing that for four years. Plans to take down the stack? Oh yes, going to be gone. Uh, why can't? Uh, the, well, it was the, the woman is here regularly, not because you two are kind of new. Bryony, <laughs> yes, B R I B R I O N Y, yes. Angus also, well, formerly of Ty and Bond. Oh, she's not Ty. No, she left to take care of kids at a summer camp. Greener pastures, I like it. Literally yeah. greener pastures. <laughs> she's been doing it for like 15, 20 years, part time, and the director retired, so she took over. Anyhow, uh, I, I, I miss her too. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, although I, I, I like uh, her, the replacements. I'm not saying anything. But I just I miss her. Okay, now I know. She's got summer camp. Um, okay, so how do we how do we know it's going to happen? Uh, I almost feel like making this. I almost feel like making a motion, make it contingent upon it coming down. By by, but I'm not going to make that motion because I know these things change. But so you said the end of July, uh, Bob. So how do we? Do we have a piece of paper that says that? Is that in here somewhere? Uh, I don't think it's. No, no it just so, right? came out from um, the demolition contractor. So, so you've engaged the contractor? Yeah, that's that? part of the um, ongoing demolition of the building that's out of floodplain. And the stack, we had to demonstrate no asbestos in the stack. And having the stack being built in the late 50s, um, prints and available information was sparse. So we had to hire a contractor to go up at heights uh, to take samples of the various areas within the stack because there's essentially two components of the stack. You have an inner brick chimney uh, that's probably like a couple of feet in diameter with brick and mortar and sometimes the mortar has asbestos fibers in it. And then you have the outer, what you can see from the road, the outer concrete stack um, and that had a coating on the interior of the stack. Um, so we had to go up and take uh, representative samples of the brick mortar and the coating. And then where metal frames were fixed to the uh, stack from the uh, former boiler as the flue gas came into it. Sometimes they use asbestos gasketing <coughs> material, especially back in the 50s. So we had to uh, assess those areas and also at the top of the stack 
there's metal rings that hold um, components together as well as provide additional support um, for people going up at height for the FAA lights and things of that nature. So we had to take samples and uh, assess those areas. And over the past couple of months that work has been completed and um, we had some asbestos rope at the base of the chimney and a couple of uh, stack drains that were transite pipe and we've uh, had that all abated. And a license, mass license uh, inspector, asbestos inspector has cleared the stack. We provided all that information to DEP and uh, just this morning, uh, DEP responded and said they are uh, in agreement with our assessment and no further work is necessary to demolish the stack. Um, okay, so you said they had, a, who has to issue the permit? The, 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 does our, doesn't our building commissioner have to issue a permit? So the, the process is to get a demolition permit from the state fire marshal, as well as the city of Holyoke, uh, fire department. Um, to, the last time we went through this process for the boiler, um, the state fire marshal um, deferred to the fire chief for the ordinance. Um, we had to um, submit a plan to the mayor to let him know this activity was happening. We had to notify area residents of the activity um, we put up dust monitors, vibration sensors, because of the electrical switch yard that is in existence and live and energized to um, prevent um, any type of blackout condition for those areas. Um, we had to, um, or we chose to hire um, a police department to set up roadblocks to halt traffic when the, the explosion went off for the boiler. Um, we'll be doing the same thing for the stack so that, um, you know, nobody's stunned by uh, the stack hitting the ground as they're driving by. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> Selling tickets. Well, you, you heard we're trying, we're trying to raise revenue in the city. <laughs> you you heard all about that either. We're going to be well, spent, we're, we're going to be see if tomorrow night if we spend revenue. We'll we'll see how that vote goes down. We, we, that'll we, be that'll be interesting. There was uh, the mayor was looking, uh, not the mayor uh, Marcos, I forget his title, um, right. to see if we can retain the stack as a historical measure. Um, but because of all the long term liability aspects of that, we we couldn't entertain that. Yeah, there's no historic so. significance to a smoke sack. Okay. Did, did he actually request that? What's that? Who requested that? Marcos was looking to put a mural up there and maybe have like a viewing area for a tourist attraction type of thing. You made that up. I did. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> well, uh, I can see why the mayor proposed yet another raise for the OPEC director in, the, in this year's budget. I'll tell you, you get ideas like that. That is out of the movies. Um, all right, enough, enough of that one. Um, okay, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I, I think that uh, I think we're probably going to have to certainly we're going to have to have conditions relative to um, DEP. So um, whatever there, I mean, I don't have any correspondence from from DEP. That none, none were provided to. If I can help out a little bit, uh, if, you, if you'd like, the, they they won't be. We don't need to impose the condition because they won't be able to go ahead with the demolition without the DEP approval. That's, that's not possible. So, the, so. The, the, so if we so we don't have to even condition that then. So that that's a, that's a prerequisite. Right. Or we we're a prerequisite though. We're a prerequisite. Yeah, so to, we're before that. We're, we're 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 prerequisite to mass, to DEP, aren't we? Do that the permit be in place? Yes. That's, that's probably one of the boxes that has to get checked off. Oh, it's for DEP. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think so. I think it's we have to comply with the ACO, which mandates us to assess the risk which we have, submit the reports for the remedial aspects which we will be doing, and before any of the work can commence going forward, we have to seek all permits. So you have to get an AQ 004, is it? Uh, double, yeah, 004. The air, the air quality. Um, permit from DEP? No, it's under the MCP program. Um, that's, I think that's the AQ is air quality. Uh, right. That's if you have uh, a combustion source 
and you're either installing a new one or expanding the existing one. This is under the MCP. I, I don't know the, um, it's phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four plans that have to be submitted under the Massachusetts contingency plan. Right. Which one is requiring you to do the dust monitoring? Um, well, there really isn't any driver from DEP to do dust monitoring. We are just doing that. They recommended and suggested it, and NG decided we will obviously comply. And it also helps us with any type of um, complaints that come in about potential you know, excessive dust from, from the activity. Yeah, like water skiers getting a mouthful of soup going by. Yeah. That, that and even the vibration uh, detectors is a requirement. Eversource is putting in their own, but we're putting in ours too for you know, protection of our, uh, our measures. Okay, uh, I don't see anyone here from the public uh, to speak for or against this. Um, so I'll take a motion to, uh, to, to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. second. Motion made and second to close the public hearing and discussion hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the public hearing is, is closed. Um, I heard what Councillor Sullivan said relative to the DEP. Um, okay, I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying if, uh, so we can, we can, we can make a, prove this special permit without conditioning it on, on, on DEP's prior approval or DEP's approval of this thing, Mike, is that what you're saying? Yeah, as, yeah. as I understand it, they couldn't go ahead with the project without DEP approval. All right. And, and, and does our conservation commission ever, do, do they, do they not wait? Do they not weigh in, win in this? Oh, our conservation commission. There are seven agencies we're seeking permits from in this project, and CONCOM is the third hearing is this coming Thursday night. Oh, okay. So yeah, we have the CONCOM DEP from the Wetlands Protection Act, uh, Corps of Engineers for work in the waterways. Um, Na yep, here it is. Me, thank you. Natural heritage for endangered species, both in the river as well as on the land-based area. Um, and and then, the stormwater permit was yeah. issued earlier tonight. Yep, thank you. Was oh, that with the DP, uh, DBW? Yes. Yeah. Okay, 143 acres, actively marketed, former nuclear waste site. Um, um, boy. Yeah, smoke's that coming down. Okay, well, all right. If uh, if that's all there is to it, I guess we can get a motion then. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, special permit application amount time generating uh, for a new special permit. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the special permit. Under discussion, none uh, on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that that's what, that's the hearing opposed. None. Okay. So we'll just um, we'll recommend that to the uh, full city council, and we'll just give them the background as best we can. Uh, we'll, we'll have a regular city council meeting tomorrow at seven. You may or may not attend, depending on your schedule, and um, and we'll just see how it goes from there. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Um, the the last one on is just kind of informational thing for uh, uh, scheduling of a next meeting date. I, at this point, I, I I haven't heard from the any department heads. Uh, and I, I don't in the in the jacket. While there are orders in the jacket that we could, if there, I think, Council Sullivan and Council Murphy might. Have, I think I have some orders in here. I, I'm happy to schedule another one in, in June if you want. Uh, but I don't, I'm not. I don't have anything from a department head perspective. So if there's something in that you want me to schedule uh, for for this month, I can. If not, we can. If you think it can wait till uh, we meet the first Tuesday in August. Generally, the city council. Yeah, yeah. First okay. Tuesday after, after so uh, we can. I, I, w I would prefer to wait on any other business and focus right now on the budget and the other issues before us with the ballot questions and stuff. Uh, try to get through this month with, the, especially with the budget. Yeah, I, I, Mike, I, I think you're right. Uh, I, I just, I just want to offer that because I. No, I again, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what I have in there and how pressing it might be. So, but. If there's something that's not real pressing, I'm fine with that. Well, I, I think yeah. they're general, general. Uh, Terry. I, I think they're kind of, I have I have some 
orders in there. They're not, um, I, I mean, for example, uh, the cafe downstairs, there, there's nothing relative to that. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, and I, I think there's a few more in there that, that we, can, we can hold off on. I don't, I don't think we really need to schedule anything. So, so we but, can just sort of keep it loose. Uh, yeah, we have two meetings uh, in still in June full council meeting so maybe if something comes up out of there that's important we could have a meeting in July yeah I, I mean I'm available that week of July 4th obviously that's a that's, oh, right. a, that, that's a non-starter but um, but otherwise otherwise I think we're pretty well around okay yeah. so yeah. all right so we talked about that and okay so and just so you know I become much less available in July because I run my baseball league and yeah right. I'm, right I'm trying to make sure I got it covered but just in case <laughs> oh, okay well you know out of courtesy to Councilor Murphy I, I wouldn't want to have a I mean, we, we have met in July, but there are times that we, we haven't. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so I, I would think that we could probably, this body should probably look at, um, yeah, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through this with, with, uh, with Mr. Allen, and we'll just see, we'll see what orders are, are still pending. And, and, you know, there's probably a, probably five or 10 in there. I don't know, I don't think there's that many, but um, and we'll see what are pending, and I'll just send an email out. And then, and then maybe we could look at, you know, the middle of August, you know, so after our first, our only city council meeting in August. We can look at that, and then, then if we want, we can meet it in the middle end of August and take it up at the first September meeting. Yeah, uh, August 9th, so that would work. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to suggest if they're all Councilor Murphy's order, let's take them up in July and get them. <laughs> <laughs> That's his busy time. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, I <laughs> it's, uh, talk to him. Yeah. It's, uh, if if you know, Councilor Murphy's running his camp, we 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 ought to we ought to give him give him some elbow room on that. Okay. Um, so we talked about that. So we're we're not going to schedule another meeting, uh, pending uh, for a further discussion. So uh, one last motion. will do it. Motion adjourned. On the uh, motion, made a second to adjourn. On the motion, all in favor. Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.